David Seymour. Yeah, there's no tardiness here. Uh, so here I'd like to address uh, this bill with particular regard uh, to the amendments to my supplementary order paper, uh, number 181. <laughs> that was well, can, quite good. Can I, I'm going to interrupt the, the member <laughs> straight away and say that, that he is aware, um, because he's been reported as such, that his amendments are out of scope, and while he may make a passing reference to them, he cannot build a speech on them. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, let me address uh, the bill a bit more widely before making a passing reference uh, to my bill, and you'll see that my speech will not be built upon uh, the amendment that's been ruled out of order, uh, but it does actually form an interesting uh, piece of backdrop to how the House came, or the committee came, to be uh, debating the bill tonight. Um, uh, Mr Chair, as has been uh, discussed uh, at length uh, through an earlier stages, uh, Clause 4 of this bill, really the only clause that uh, has a huge amount of influence, uh, extends uh, the powers of the Official Information Act uh, from members of the Privy Council, uh, from ministers and associate ministers, uh, to under-secretaries. Uh, Mr Speaker, this was not the intention, uh, as Mr Foster Bell has said, of the Official Information Act. Ex Executive Council, I think the member means. Executive Council. Very sorry, you're, you're right, Mr Chair, and thank you for that correction. Um, and it was not also uh, the intention uh, when the, such matters were revisited by the Constitution Act uh, by the Fourth Labour Government in 1986. So it is uh, a significant change. Uh, and as Mr Foster Bell has said, uh, while I'm not so worried um, about which perks uh, come with the bill, I don't think that there should be a balance between obligations and perks because we're all honoured to serve uh, here uh, in Parliament in whatever capacity. Uh, what is important is that Clause 4 will make no material difference uh, to the way that undersecretaries operate uh, and the transparency in the way that they operate. Uh, and I might venture, Mr Chair, uh, that as the only current member of Parliament who has served as an undersecretary, I'm in a unique position uh, to say this. Uh, I think you'll find that's true, Mr Chair. Uh, Mr Chair, uh, the last one was actually Dover Samuels. Uh, Mr Chair, I uh, have already uh, made a point of tabling or proactively releasing all official information that I have held uh, in my capacity as an Undersecretary. Uh, and in an earlier reading, I made a point of piling it up on this desk and showing members uh, quite what a volume of information has already uh, been made proactively available. Uh, but more importantly, more importantly, uh, uh, the, the member's asking, did I begin those releases before or after uh, this bill was drawn? Um, I suspect that what she'll find is, if she looks back through the record, uh, the notion of proactive release uh, began in December uh, 2014, uh, when I uh, signed a letter uh, with Minister Parasa, which was a guide to how information, Official Information Act requests uh, to uh, my particular duties as Under Secretary would be dealt with. Uh, I'm not aware of when the bill was drawn, but I think the member will find uh, that actually uh, the bill was drawn after that time. Uh, so a good question, uh, but as is often the, uh, the case with the member, uh, not a particularly relevant one. Uh, Mr Chair, can, if I can return to the substance of the bill um, rather than the uh, heckling uh, that I'm encountering from the far corner. Uh, Mr Chair, the, the, the second reason why Clause 4 will make no substantial difference uh, is that an Undersecretary, according to the Constitution Act, uh, derives all of their powers from the Minister. Uh, so to the extent that the Undersecretary uh, is ex exercising uh, any power, uh, it can be the power they are exercising and what it is being used for can be discovered by sending an Official Information Act request uh, to the Minister's office. Uh, and that's why Minister Parata and I, uh, given that we thought we might get a lot of Official Information Act requests, actually moved to have a procedure uh, for dealing with such requests. And funnily enough, as Under Secretary, I've been signing up the ones that weren't already proactively released, which it turns out uh, most of them were. So it is a clause uh, that will have no material impact 
um, on the operation of undersecretaries. It won't give the people watching or listening at home any additional insight uh, into how undersecretaries such as myself operate. Uh, and so I'm more than happy uh, for this bill to go through on that basis. Uh, but I would say, Mr Shear, that once we have breached the, difference, uh, uh, the distinction between the Executive Council, uh, between Minister... Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Brett Hudson. Oh. Thank you, Mr Chair. And uh, I just note thanks to the House for agreeing.